Sister of Murder accused Guyana Defense Force Sergeant Gregory Smith has told the Walter Rodney Commission of Inquiry that if her brother had spoken to Donald Rodney in July 1980, there would not have been the need for the Commission of Inquiry. Ann Wagner said her brother was seeking answers from Donald Rodney and wanted him to tell the truth about what happened on the fateful night of Friday, June 30, 1980, when political scholar Dr. Walter Rodney was killed in a bomb blast in close proximity to the Camp Street Jail. When your brother returned to Guyana in um, July of 1980, he was looking for Donald Rodney because he wanted to have a conversation with Donald Rodney. Um, that's in your book. Right. Do you recall the yes, conversation yes. you had? Uh, with Donald Rodney, he did not um, meet with him. Right, but he was looking for Donald Rodney. He went to a location where he, he thought he would find, find Donald Rodney. You recall that yes. in your book? Yes, I recall that. Why would he do that? Did he tell you? He, he, he wanted to get to Menzies. He wanted to talk, he wanted him to tell the truth. For 34 years, speculation surrounded the involvement of Smith in the assassination of Dr. Rodney in June 1980. Smith was accused of disguising a bomb in a communication device that killed Rodney. The device was handed to brother of the scholar, Donald Rodney. Wagner, during her testimony, sought to vindicate her brother from any involvement in the act on the basis that the details of the events were related to her by Smith and recorded in manuscripts that composed the book, Assassination, Cry of a Failed Revolution. While there were omissions from the original manuscripts that were submitted to the commission, Wagner, during cross-examination by Guyana Trades Union Congress attorney, Selwyn Peters, attributed this to sloppiness on her part, but said it was not her intention to deceive the public. You were also um, questioned um, very, you were questioned at length at very, about various omissions in the book. You recall that? Yes, sir. And um, I don't know if you recall, at one point the chairman said that um, the omissions in the book may play some part in assessing the credibility of the book. You recall that? Yes, sir. Would you characterize, and let me finish the entire question before you answer. Would you characterize the omissions in the book as sloppiness or carelessness on your part? Yes. Um, did you have any intent to deceive the public or the readership of your book? No. Smith died of cancer in 2002 and while his sister described his physical condition as poor at that time, she said emotionally he was strong. Attorney Peter sought to determine if Smith was mentally stable enough to recount the information transcribed in the manuscripts that constituted the book Assassination Cry of a Field Revolution. He helped conditions, but uh, he was still portraying that strength to us as if he was doing good. Uh, still, still, still trying to play a soldier. Strong. <laughs> Very well. He had four young children, my understanding is, at that material time. Yes, sir. Um, and I'm sorry, Mr. Peters, because you put a general question to her in the latter part, when you visited him, and you have not defined what you meant by latter part. I'm looking at her statement on paragraph 48, and I'm wondering if that latter part relates to the July visit for a month or if she's going back to September 1999. So perhaps you could clarify for us what you mean by the latter part when you ask her that question. Uh, Madam Commissioner, when I say the latter part, I'm asking her about the time in which she spent a month with him. Oh. Thank you. And was that what she was answering? I wasn't as clear as I should have been. Um, Madam. Yes, sir. I don't think you've given us a direct answer with respect to his emotional health, which is the, answer, which is the question for which I seek an answer. Can you tell us what his emotional health was like emotional. during the month in which, you, in which you spent with him? Can you tell us whether he appeared vulnerable, whether, he, whether psychologically he was strong, whether he was lucid, whatever you can tell us about his emotional health. His, tell us. 
His emotional health was very strong. Wagner also denied testimonies from earlier witnesses that Smith was absent without leave from the GDF, stating that she was told that her brother resigned from the army. She said Dr. Rodney used her brother's knowledge of electronics to build a device which was handed to Donald Rodney and that he was warned that the equipment provided were faulty and may be dangerous. Attorney Basil Williams sought to establish that Smith, who was believed to be on the run, had expressed an interest in returning to Guyana to stand trial, as revealed in an interview conducted by the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, with Smith in 1996. This follows the issuance of a warrant for his arrest for the murder of Dr. Rodney the same year. The, the uh, French government had some stipulations and the government never followed through with it. Okay. And that stipulation was they would not send him back if there was a chance that he could be tried or whatever charge he's tried with eventuates in a sentence of death. Yes, sir. Now, the BBC interview, did he, in that interview, express his desire to return and face trial in Ghana? Yes, sir. What year do you recall was that BBC interview? I think it was 96. I'm not sure. 96? 96, I think so. And in fact, we were shown a warrant for 1996 for pretend to be on a warrant for his arrest. Remember you were shown a warrant? Yes. So it meant before that, you would agree with me, he was never charged for, for anything in relation to the death of Dr. Rodney. No, not until before that time. Before 1996. That's right, sir. So before 1996, there was no question of him having to return to Ghana to face his trial. You agree with that? I agree with that, yes. And upon his and upon, and upon the issuance, issuance of the warrant of arrest in 1996, he right away indicated to the BBC that he was prepared to return to face any trial. Yes, sir. Donald Rodney's attorney, Andrew Pilgrim, on behalf of attorney Keith Scotland, who represents the Rodney family at the commission, sought clarity as to who may have triggered the device, since in Smith and Wagner's book, it was stated that Smith built a device that would be triggered remotely from afar. In a paragraph, about four, par four or five paragraphs from the bottom, it begins, Smith confirmed that he traveled to Kwakwani to seek his father's help. That is wrong. Right. That's not true, you're saying. That is not true. Did you or Gregory Smith ever contact Starbrook News to suggest that this was false? I said yes, no. Again, you're going back over very carefully, Trevor. I, I just want to get to the, the third question, Chair, which is this. Who are you saying is responsible for this distortion? Just the press at large or the WPA or anyone in particular? Whoever wrote, I, I don't know. I can't answer that question, sir. Uh, uh, no, the article says it's a Starbuck News article. Indeed, Chair. It's like in Iraq, so to carry out the news at large and so on. It has a particular focus. Yes, we Chair, but she said yesterday, sorry, with Gregory Smith. The witness said yesterday that she put these articles in here to show that the press were distorting the facts and that there were various inconsistencies. So I'm just asking, are you saying that the press in general were distorting the facts for any particular reason or on the behalf of any particular person? I can't say that. I, I, I don't know that. All I know that this particular article 
is, 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 is inconsistent with what really happened. I can't say if it was an error on the, the, the writer or who. Especially since you made no effort whatsoever to correct it. This, is, question. This, this, this is not the only article. Tons of them. I'm only asking about one at this stage. The answer to that is on the record, sir. Grateful, sir. Now, yesterday you referred to a number of big names. Have you since yesterday gone and confirmed those big names? No, sir. Lead counsel to the commission, Glenn Hanneman, during re-examination of Wagner, questioned how Smith obtained a new passport. A picture was taken of Gregory. When was this picture taken? This picture was taken... Um, somebody took a picture of him. picture was taken of him. When? At what stage? Around, around, around that same time. From the time he left the ship to go to Mr. Fowler, the photograph was taken? No, like probably the next day or something like that. No, no, no. A picture was taken of him, and a, so a guy took the picture of him. You have that included in your book? Or you, that is from your memory? The, I, I, I can't even find it. It's in my head. This is what I'm recalling, yes. The question put to you was whether Gregory Smith, your brother, ever told you where the photograph and the new passport that he was given came from. It came from Mr. Did, no, Fowler. First of all, did he tell you? He said Mr. Fowler, he got it from Mr. Fowler. Yes. We did tell you where Mr. Fowler got it from. He didn't, did know, know, he didn't know where he got it from. Did that it, was given, it was given to him. You and Mr. You and Gregory Smith had a conversation about this photograph, or you? He, did he tell you? No, he told me they, they took this picture. They told you he took his picture. Yes. Do you have an idea yeah. when this picture was taken? It's in the book. Let me suggest to you that there's no nothing like that in the book. That immediately as Gregory Smith came from Trinidad. Mr. Fowler had a passport with, with his photograph in it already. Come to outside to disturb me, but I just want to ask her um, whether the failure of Mr. Fowler to, to, to provide his address and the whole context in which he was meeting him, whether you accept that his name was any Fowler or that that too could have been a fiction. Uh, I never asked. But well, okay, but now that your that is, is yes. put to you, does it not occur to you that that name might very well have been a fiction? The man is not telling you, don't, don't get into a dress, man. Don't get into my dress. You're shaking your head, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, you have a point. What does that mean that I have a point? That, that Mr. Fowler didn't want to disclose any information. Including his identities, but you have to have a name. So I am a lawyer. But king. Being, being, when you are in a situation where your life and, and you are around all this turmoil, it's, 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 it's one thing to say, but just another to be in it. When you're not in it, you could think everything. But when you're in it, you can't think. You don't even know what your name is. Yes, but what the chairman is saying, and we understand that it would not perhaps have occurred to it your brother, yes. and it didn't occur to, to you. Me either. And it didn't occur to you earlier. But from this distance, you are saying, if, when you said you have a point, you are, what, what do you mean? No, he, what the, 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 the um, commissioner was saying when he well, what he said that it, he did have a point. It did make what what he was saying it made Are sense. Are you saying that it is uh, it is it possible made sense. It made or sense likely what he was saying. that it could have been it a point? Been somebody that could be I don't know. Okay, thank you. But we he didn't have this. The Depending on the nature of the mission, the mission you are carrying out, you may have to change your identity. Give a false name. 
when you're operating okay. in that sort of environment. Okay, okay. Tell you how you will get it. Now, through your lawyer, you produced a passport issued to Cyril Johnson in 1999, the original which is here. Yes. Where did you get that passport from? His wife brought it up. Pardon me? His wife brought it up. Brought it up where? To, to Guyana. Okay. Did you notice on that passport that it was issued at the passport office in Georgetown? In I, 1999? I didn't look at it. You didn't look at it? No, I didn't look at it. I don't know if my friend can assist me with the passport. If on the passport itself it states that the passport was issued in Georgetown in 1999. But what year was that that he got it? You're talking about the second passport. There's a second passport that Mr. Martins George has shared to us and we photocopied and, and yes. disseminated that. No, I didn't. Is it in evidence, sir? Is a copy of it in evidence? No. But we have enough copies? Yes. So are you going to be referring to it? Do you want to put it in evidence? Yes, please. I'm guided. No. I don't know how anybody following would have known that. <coughs> like, huh? We were dealing with a 1982 passport. Now we are dealing with a second passport, all in the name of uh, Cyril Milton Johnson. Could I ask you to look, please, Mrs. Wagner, at a Guyana passport in favor of Cyril Johnson, Milton Johnson, issued on the 21st of May 1999. Do you see that passport? Page four. Page four will tell you where, uh, when okay. it was issued. Yes, I see it. Do you agree that that is a passport that was given to this commission by the, your attorney at law, Mr. Martins George? Yes. Could I ask that this passport be admitted into evidence and tagged? It will be ARW2. ARW2, please. Page four. Page four. Page four. But at that time, uh, it was put these things there that he had no connection with the WP as far as you know. Gregory Smith. Now, do, do you agree, Mrs. Wagner, that by looking at page four of that passport, yeah. that this passport was issued on the 21st of May 1999 at the passport office, Republic of Guyana? Yes. It was revealed that the then police commissioner of police, Laurie Lewis, permitted the issuing of a false passport for Smith in the name Cyril Johnson. What you're putting to her is that this 1999 passport, <coughs> the second passport yes. that was uh, issued to her brother, that the application form was prepared by Larry Lewis? That the passport was, was issued under the authority of Mr. Larry Lewis. Uh, where is that? Where is that? that uh, There's information on the application form that is not yet in evidence. I was hoping that we could finish here before we... Uh, but that is not in evidence and you're putting it to her. I don't know whether you're putting fiction or fact. I wouldn't suggest that you put... Well, if it, if it pleases you, I have an immigration officer here that I could seek to interpose to try and lead all of this evidence. Is it, is it a document? Yes. That no, you just handed it up? Yes. yes. Good point, this theory. There's an application form 
that has no signature on it of the applicant, that has no guarantor in it, that states on its face from COP, which I am instructed stands for Commissioner of Police, and I'm further instructed that in 1999 the Commissioner of Peace was none other than Mr. Larry Lewis. The application form in relation to the second part sport, dated 21st of May 1999, um, has a notation on page two. On page three, sorry, that the that the application was transmitted directly from COP which I'm informed stands for the Commissioner of Police and the head of the immigration. Documents produced from COP. <coughs> Part of it is in, um, yes, in hand and the other uh, documents produced relate to staff. Yes, please. Yes, I, I intend to introduce that evidence to the immigration officer who located these application forms. Mr. Chairman, can I? You go ahead. You go ahead. Yes. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a preliminary question? Uh, what use uh, Commission Council intend to make of these documents with this witness? Well, one of the, ap the, the very application form has a photograph of an uh, older Gregory Smith that I would like for the witness to look at. I have the original, I'm not sure. The Even 1999 passport, does it have a photograph? Yes. I'm not seeing any photograph. That's a And the copy that we have provided. I rely on your assurance. Oh, yes, the last page. The last page. The last page. I will rely, I rely on your assurance, Council, that you will bring evidence to establish that Mr. Larry Lewis was commissioner at yes. that period uh, when the second passport was given. I hope you have picked up that my concern related to pointing to evidence not yet produced. Yes. Very well. The passport that you have in your hands, is, does that reflect uh, is that a true photograph of Gregory Smith? <coughs> the last page. The last page. Yes, it's a Yeah. Do you agree that that is a photograph that could have reflected how he looked in 1999? Can't be sure. You it, can't be sure that that is him or it, no, it's him. Date. But I, I can't tell you the year. If it, this is in his 1989 picture, this is how we looked in '89. But um, but that's a that's a photograph of him. This is a picture of him. 
photograph on application form in 1999. Passport. Passport form, sorry. Passport. And I, I wish to show to you. But the for the passport form. I wish to show to you an application for Guyana passport leading up to that particular passport with the photograph. Could you say whether that is also a photograph of your brother Gregory Smith? Further questions arose about Smith's mental health. However, Wagner rejected suggestions that her brother may have been paranoid and had a victim complex as portrayed in his book. She did admit that Smith felt remorse for the part he played in Rodney's death. Smith's sister also rejected a suggestion by Commission Chairman Sir Richard Cheltenham that there was a lot that Gregory Smith did not tell her given the evidence presented in the ninth round of the hearings. Police Sergeant Alexis Adams, attached to the Records Department of the Central Immigration and Passport Office, also testified before the Commission to bring clarity to the immigration process in an effort by the Commission's counsel to address the irregularities associated with the issuance of the false passport to Gregory Smith in the name Cyril Johnson. It was verified by Sergeant Adams that the passport was issued through the permission of late Commissioner Laurie Lewis, who would have been the Chief Immigration Officer at that time and did not follow the regular process and the guarantor was Army Officer Goodwin F. McPherson. Assistant Lead Counsel to the Commission, Latimer Hamad, summed up the final day of the ninth round of public hearings. It was put to her that this book and the contents therein is a fabrication. Ms. Wagner said when she came to the commission, she did not expect that she would have been questioned so extensively in relation to the stories inside of that book. We have to realize that when Ms. Wagner came, she did not come to give us first-hand information that I was there and I saw these things. But what she did in fact come to us to tell us is that these are the things that were told to me by my brother. And she's saying that I believe my brother. But we also have to understand that she did in fact tell the commission today that clearly some things her brother did not tell her. But she still believes that her brother had nothing to do with the death of Dr. Rodney. What is also important is that she told the commission today that she was also helping her brother financially. And if her brother had told her that he was involved in a plot to try to kill or assassinate Dr. Walter Rodney, she would not have been supporting him financially. And I think that is also significant. We also had Miss Adams who came and she just came to tell us about the procedures in relation to applying for a passport and to tender the documents that she would have found from the search. One additional document that Ms. Adams brought that was tendered to the Commission today is a passport application form in the name of William Smith. Not Gregory, but William Smith. That particular form had an address, West Rumveld, which is consistent with Ms. Wagner's evidence in relation to where her brother would have lived prior to her leaving the country in 1970. That form also has a picture of Gregory Smith, and that particular form was in the form, actually. There was an annotation that Gregory Smith, William Smith, was going on a UK course on behalf of the Army. Now, it had been said in the beginning of these proceedings that when this thing first happened and nobody was saying that, you know, the article said there is no Gregory Smith in the army. There was evidence that came out in reports and newspaper reports that William Gregory Smith was a sergeant in the army and that he did in fact travel to the UK on a course on behalf of the army to do electronics. Now what we find in that particular application form is a supporting letter coming from a Captain McPherson who is a, was a captain in the army at the time. And that letter said that look, these two people, one of whom was listed as William Smith, are going for the army to attend a course in the UK in 1975. Now that is an aspect that is consistent with even a bit of the evidence that came from Miss Wagner when she told the commission that her brother did in fact go to the UK to study on behalf of the army. Now there is no doubt at this point in time that William Smith was a member of the army and that William Smith did in fact 
go to the, Uni the United Kingdom to study electronics on behalf of the Army. And this is just another piece of corroborating evidence that this man did exist. This man was in the Guyana Army. This that man did, in fact, have dealings with electronics and did in fact receive training to deal with electronics and the army helped him in attaching that letter to his application form for a passport to get that passport in the name William Smith. Now Miss Wagner told the commission that she's unaware of her brother having any other passport but that form based on what Miss Adams is saying indicated that he did in fact get that passport that was applied for for him to go on the trip to the UK for the army and that is also an inconsistency that arises there.